Okay, um, what I wanted to do was um, show you this really cool file that I created. It's, it's a 3D object. I brought it into Photoshop, but after creating it, I realized probably some, whoops, some of you may have some issues with being able to manipulate the file or might want to be able to do things. You just aren't aware of some of the capabilities that Photoshop does have as far as 3D is concerned. Let me undo this layer. Okay, there we go. Alright, first in order to manipulate the file, I mean usually you would use the the normal tool to do this. Like you can move it up and down in its environment like just as a regular layered object. But if you want to turn it, if you want to make it smaller without having to create a smart object or rasterize it, you want to go to one of these two buttons. Um, if you can't find them, go to your three your window view and pull up the three D panel. Sometimes that helps just being able to see what you're doing. But um, they should be on your toolbar and um, this is the camera and this is the object. The difference is that your camera is looking at the file. Let's imagine that you're in a studio somewhere and this file scroll is floating in front of you. Your camera is twirling around it, right? And you can adjust it, you can change it right back to front. Oh, that just was not very fun. What happened? Okay, there we go. Sometimes that's not a good idea, especially if the coordinates aren't exactly what Photoshop wants. But um, with the camera file, you can do that, or you can make it twirl with the object position. Sometimes um, it depends on which one and how the file was created, how close to zero in the um, 3D program when it was created as to how it, when you bring it into Photoshop, like if someone made it and it's like 250 millimeters or centimeters or meters away from the actual zero point, you'll have a weird object access and you will be able to twirl it around very much. So it's easy, it's probably a good idea to use one of these. Now in each one of these you um, can click on them and there will be a scroll down panel. You have the orbit and you can roll your camera. That's like doing a barrel roll when you're um, as if you're flying a plane. Um, pan is just moving the camera up or down, right or left, right? Okay. 3D walk, very similar. A little bit different, a little bit more of a parametric evol evolution on that one. Um, you have 3D zoom and that what that does is it widens the aperture setting or I'm sorry the camera focal lens. I wouldn't use it unless you absolutely have to or if you're trying to get a different thing. Now the 3D object if you wanted to grow larger without having to um, scale it up, the scale layer up, create a smart object, rasterize it, you want to use the slide tool. And then there's also 3D scale tool but usually the slide tool is more than enough and what it's doing is, is it bringing it closer to your camera. You can go in as close as you want without image degradation. Well, as as much as the texture is, you can't really go any bigger than what the texture actually is. And that's another option I'm going to show you as soon as I'm done here. Um, the pan is just like the camera pan except for you're panning the object separate from the camera. So if you have several 3D objects in here and they're all in the same scene, if they're at different heights and you, this is basically moving the object up or down in that 3D scene. If you pan the camera, then you're panning the camera past everything in the scene. So there is a difference. So please try to remember it. There's also 3D roll and that's just turning it on its axis. axis. Oops. All right, let's get into some of the um, materials. Um, when you open up your 3D panel here, I'm in CS4 just in case you're wondering, but I, I also use CS5 and 6. CS4 for, for this baby machine that I have is probably more than it can handle. Um, what you'll have is the object mesh, and that's the actual object that you're messing with. Sometimes it'll be a whole scene. Sometimes it'll just be one object in Photoshop. I don't know really how that works yet. I'm going to figure it out. Um, underneath it, it'll list some, if not all, of the materials. 
okay and when you click on here it'll show you everything that's involved in that material if you notice there's an opacity map and what that means is that it uses an alpha channel for the opacity of your item and this is really cool because you can go in and once you you create a 3D object, whether it's in Blender, whatever, and you want to mess with the opacity, like if it has it's supposed to is how it's supposed to have these really weird edges, like I have on mine, where you can see through it. Well, that's what you would do here, and you could see this on the layer drop down over here where you have layers. If you double click, what it'll do is it'll pull up the layer pretty easy it's just like a it's just like a channel black and white white is solid not see-through black is see-through transparent end of story anything any changes you do here will show up on the other so let's say you decide to um, let me see alright and you just press save you go back there oh it's destroyed oh no but it's not it really isn't you just go back into your opacity map you select that puppy and you tell it oh edit fill white okay it's fixed should be fine you save okay go back out oh well now it's fixed but what that means is that you could pretty much do anything and the same is with the the texture this is the texture um, you can put anything you want on here. If you wanted text to display, if you wanted an icon or logo to display, that's possible too. Perfectly reasonable. Um, you can create layers. You can use layer styles in the texture, believe it or not. Let's say I want something here. It might get distorted though because of the text. Let's see. I'll go to my styles. Where are you? And whoops. Window styles. Load styles. Oh look, the medieval armor. Hmm. I don't know if you've had a chance to try some of the freebies on this, but they are really cool. Mm. Gold keep is kind of nice. Uh, Shadow Bay, nah. How about Lissur? Oh, I love that one. That one's so pretty. I work so freaking hard on that one. Let me see. I'll scale it up so you can really see it. And put it maybe in the middle. All right. So you want to put that on there. Go back to your scroll. Oh, it's upside down. Well, that's okay. We can turn around. Remember, we were messing with it. Oh, it's upside down and backwards. That's not good. Well, there's a way to fix that. Hold on, let me close my style window. It's not working. Um, I will tell you that sometimes with Photoshop, it is a little buggy as far as like the ability to turn things. It's not as smooth as what you would expect in a 3D program because in 3D Studio Max, Cinema 4D, and Maya, I have no issues making things roll around. And Photoshop sometimes takes a little bit. Um, and depending on how much RAM you have in your machine will affect the performance. So just keep that in mind. Okay, if you do have, uh, since this is a freebie, I'm not going to worry about it. But since um, we have issues with that, what I can do, transform flip horizontal okay since it's just inverted it's pretty easy to fix see now it's on the piece of parchment paper and when I rotate it it stays and you see the lighting kind of change depending on how the this is um, displayed but I mean if you just play with it a little bit you can really do some neat things because this is an actual 3D file that you can manipulate in space. You can put letters and textures. And you can do anything you want. Oh, and also, if you want to create more than just one, let's say you want different instances of the scroll, you want one tilted this way, one tilted the other way, all you have to do is go to Layer, Smart Object, Convert to Smart Object, and then do Smart Object 
new smart object via layer. Um, let me try this over here. Okay, layer. New smart object via copy. And what that does is that you should be able to turn it. Mm -hmm. It's just made a um, copy of the file. Alright, close. Yeah, see, I don't care. Right. Now, because these are smart objects, they are not on a 3D layer. You have to double click the layer to get in there, but you can see the possibilities by doing this. You can do pretty much anything you want. All right, I'm going to go back in to the 3D file and show you something else I think that you might like. Um, so we did the textures. Oh, yeah, light. Now, this was a pain in the butt to figure out. I, I still am like, why did they do it this way? I don't know. But your infinite light, you can tell it, like, the intensity. You might want to mess with it a little bit. Like, obviously, you don't want it so bright it washes out everything. You could tell it it's just a spotlight. And depending on the distance from your object, um, it will have an impact on how well it lights it out. You could give it more softness. And when you do that, it should tell you. Hold on. It's thinking. Create shadows. All right, fine. Mm. Okay. Well, there was a way. Eh. Hold on, it's thinking. My computer's catching up with me. I hate it when it does this, but it does it all the time. Infinite light. Oh, here we are. Oh, here we here's some. Okay. Now somehow oh this is where you get to mess with the position. Like you have to go in where you can see the lights and then you can select their angle. See how that's affecting everything? You can see the little one back over here is moving based on what I'm doing over here. So, depending on what you do will affect how this is lit up. It's pretty confusing, I think. You can move it back and forth. At least, uh, I guess if you have it on spot or on point, you might be able to. Your camera, you can move. Or you can move the light to camera. Whatever. Um, there was something else I wanted to show that I don't think a lot of people cover in their tutorials. Oh, yeah, the texture. Let's look at the texture again. Oh, bump. What is bump? Bump is the texture of your object. And you can create um, some pretty cool illusions using bump strength. If you have like um, a carbon texture or if you want it to have more of indentation or just more um, tooth like on the paper, you can go in there and tell it new texture, whatever, whatever, and then it'll open up a default thing. La, la, la. Oh, well, this is where you can edit it. Okay, see that there's a bump and all I have to do is... Um, Let me just add some bump to it. Uh, pattern overlay. Oh no! <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Um, hmm. There's rough. Yeah, I'll just use this one. Or, I don't know. The twit, there's all sorts of things that I've made and never ever used. Wax crayon. Oh, here's a watercolor texture. You can use the default Photoshop patterns for your bump layer. You just save it. Okay. Close that. And you see it automatically updated. And with the bump 